this truck, what we're doing is we're running two sets of component speakers, a set for the back door, a set for the front door. So the kit that we have is going to have 50 feet of silver, 50 feet of black, 18 gauge for tweeter, 16 gauge for the speaker. What I like to do is I like to run the back doors first because they're the longer runs and I'd rather just take care of the longer runs. It gives you the length that you need so that you know what you have to play with for the front doors. You don't want to cut this wire until you have the run done. You want to leave slack so that you can install the, so that you can connect the crossovers. So what you're going to do is you're going to run the tweeter, run the speaker. We're going to come through here, which in a little bit I'm going to explain that you have to have a, you have to drill a hole in the wire harness that comes through the door. We're going to come down. We're going to come across. We're going to leave us enough slack to where you're not bent over trying to connect a component right here. I install the components here, but I like to sit down or I like to be right out here. So I will leave slack to come out to here on the floor which if I cut the wiring, what's to say, I'm not gonna cut it too short to where I am hunched over and stuff like that. So do not cut the wire until you're done running that full speaker. Um, let's go ahead and get started with this. Your kit will come with 100 feet of wire, 50 black, 50 silver. We do the black on the passenger side, the silver on the driver's side. So we're gonna start running the back passenger side speaker. You want to make sure everything's ready for you to run it before you start pushing wires through anything. So the first thing I like to do is this grommet right here where all the wires are running through. We're going to need to get through that so you might as well remove what you can. Bring it down a little bit because there's a wire harness that's right here. We're going to need to drill a hole through that way we can feed the wire. This grommet we're going to bring it out also. Right here, I like to cut a little slot. You can do that with a razor blade. You can do that with snips. I'll do it with a razor blade because chances are you won't have snips. Be very careful with the wiring that's in there. You do not want to cut any of that or this door becomes useless. That should be all you need to take the wiring straight up. So what we'll do now is we'll drill the hole in the wire harness, that way we have access to bring the wiring from here to here. So what I have here is I have an 11 30 seconds bit that should be big enough to fit the wiring through. It's gonna be a little tight, but we should be good. You want to be very, 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 very careful drilling through this wire harness because, again, you don't want to damage any of the wire that's in there. There is a very thin, thin green and red wire that's in here, green and white wire that's in here. Plus, I mean, you have all of the power for the door handle, I mean, for the door locks and all of that. You don't want to damage those. So the area that I drill you don't have a lot of room in here and I don't want to drill through the wall or anything like that. This clip right here is what I drill into. I just go straight through. There's nothing on the other side. We can go around if you'd like to check. Um, but I also do not do it very fast. I drill a little bit, a little bit, really slow. That way you can make sure you see where you're at. You want to double check before you push straight through that you still have a clear area. You want to make sure you're drilling straight, not down, not up. So we can go to the other side and we can see where we are. These are the wires that you do not want to hit. I got really close to this one. I mean, you don't have a lot of room, but that clip was right here. With that 11.30 seconds bit, you had just enough clearance for that. Plus, you can still put the grommet back on. So what I do is I tape the wires together. The thicker wire, I like to leave just, what, two inches longer because the thicker wire seems to hold 
shape. It'll go straight rather than the thin wire. It'll bend too easy. That's where the hole is right there. With that hole I just drilled, we're just going to feed what we need through there. Make sure you don't just pull. You want to feed it as you're pulling. And you only want to give enough length for the speaker that you're running with a little bit of extra slack. I usually like to come out about maybe a foot. And then the tweeter, which the tweeter is going to be a little bit longer as you've got to come in and then you've got to come up because the tweeter comes about right here. So we'll leave slack coming up with the wiring. We'll probably come this way and we'll tie it to that existing clip. And I'll probably leave about this much slack. All right, so if you are into sound quality, I mean, you really like the uh, really, really clean, crisp sound, restore the uh, bass that the um, factory head unit has detuned out, don't forget to check out the Taco Tunes uh, Recurve Easy Q. It makes uh, adding amps really quick and easy. You don't have to cut, splice, no taps, no nothing. Uh, be sure to check it out. It's a really neat product. It's mainly for people that are looking for really good sound quality. Generally, if you're going to be replacing your speakers and a subwoofer and you're after really high-end sound, this is the product that you're looking for. Um, this video on how to add a subwoofer is for people that just want to add a little bump, but generally if you're looking for high quality, really good quality sound, this is what you're looking for right here. Be sure to check it out. We've got all kinds of videos. And, um, oops. There's um, all types of videos and instructionals and everything to help get it set up. Alright, so let's get back to installing the subwoofer. I have enough slack here to come down the grommet over come down. You want to stay tied against this wire because this wire is factory wire and it's already clear of the window. You don't want your wiring to interfere with the window going up or down. You're going to pull the wiring out of the speaker, probably damage it. So you want to leave slack to go down like this one's doing. Come back up. This is my door speaker wire. This is my tweeter wire. I pulled a little bit more from the tweeter because that's got to go a little bit more distance. So this is good enough for the speaker itself. I can work on the speaker inside. The tweeter wire goes up, comes up to here. I'm going to tie it there. And then I still have that much slack. So I'm good with the tweeter wire as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed it through this grommet and that hole that I made. I like to squeeze the grommet to where you're pretty much dealing with the straight line. You're going to want some silicone spray. This does not damage the coating on the speaker wire. It doesn't eat away the rubber or anything like that. You can either use the star or not. You just spray a little bit into the hole. It's like lube. Try to keep this straight and then just feed the wire down. That silicone spray tastes really gross. It's very bitter. <laughs> so, I have my finger up probably to about right here. Once I feel the tip of the wire, I'm actually guiding that wire down with the end of my finger. So there, I have it out. That's it. Don't forget to put the grommets back. I have my speaker wire here. I have a little bit longer length on the tweeter wire. I'm going to put the grommet going into the door back right now. This one, you've got to kind of work with it. I like to do the back side first and then work on the front side because, of course, it's easier to work with the front side because you don't have the door blocking you but it does take a little bit of play to get the grommet back over that lip and then you just pull this side and that's it. So you have your speaker wire run through the door, you can take your tape off. It 
And again, you're going to want to stay tied as close to that wire, if not directly on it as possible, because it is factory wire and it is already out of the way. With the tweeter wire, we're going to come up with the rest of the wiring. If you need more slack, which I do here, well, yeah, I'll need a little bit more slack. I'm going to leave about that much wire. So I'm just going to pull from here. And that pulls from inside the truck. I'll get a couple of tie wraps. I'll tie wrap these to the factory wiring. That way it's out of the way. Tie wrap this up. Get all of this buttoned up. So here's where I get the little tie wraps. If you, if you buy the amp kit from us, you will get tie wraps included in that kit. Like I said, you're going to want to tie wrap to the factory wiring because it is out of the way of the window already. It is kind of a tight fit, but cut off the ends. I use needle nose, I use snips, as long as it's a cutter. This wire is good. This wire, I'll bring it up. I'll tie wrap it to the existing factory wire again. What this also does is this also gives me a service loop to play with. If I need more slack, I could just pull it up by cutting this tie wrap. I'll come up this way. So this is the factory speaker wire, this is the factory tweeter wire. I already tie wrapped that one out of the way. You're going to want to do the same thing with the speaker wire. We'll get this one. This is where I left the slack in the matting video. Tighten that up. Just make sure you cut off all your little extra pieces. Okay, here we have the extra slack. Again, do not cut this until you run it the full way to that panel. So I straighten out all of the wiring. And I like to stay going along with the factory wiring. It's much cleaner. They did it right from the beginning. You might as well stay going along that same line. So here's where we come out of the wall. We're coming down, and then we're just going to go right up front. I know it's a lot of wiring. Do not cut it again. You will come up short. So about right here is where I put another small tie wrap. I don't like any of it tight. I'd rather leave it loose. This gives us room to play if we do need to fix anything. I'm just going to take out the factory amp for now. You do have to put it back in. Oops. You have access to two 10 millimeter bolts on this side on this side make sure the drill is turned the right way and then you have access to one bolt on this side and this gets the amp out of the way you will need to put it back this is where all of your power and your connections go for the recurve but we will run the wiring through here. I will come out of here, and that'll be where we put the crossovers. Feel free to move away any carpet. Again, I like to use the factory. wiring as a guide.
See how this is tight? I don't like to leave it like that. I give myself slack. I'll use another tie wrap down here. You'll want to go underneath this vent and just stay the same route as that factory wiring. It is the safest way to go. We'll come through here. This is where our crossovers are going to go. So here's where you can finally get the slack that you wanted. I like to work right here on the floor. So I'm going to leave, what is that, about maybe two feet of slack. We'll go with about right there. A foot and a half, two feet is what I like to give myself to play. I'm going to cut it. <laughs> it's cut. So now all the extra I have for the front door. And we'll go ahead and run that one next. You want to make sure that you give yourself some type of marking to let you know that these are the the wire this is the wiring for the rear speakers we like to use blue tape just because it comes off easily leaves no mess electrical tape kind of leaves mess and it's black on black doesn't work so at the end of these two wires I'll put a little bit of tape and I'm going to just put an R R for right rear and I'm going to put FR for the front that way I know which are which plus we're also going to have a black 16 gauge cable that's going to come from this location to the amp so we'll want to make sure we know which is the in which are the outs. You're going to need to remove this kick panel because when you're running the front speakers you're going to come down you're going to come through here you need access for it. There's a little screw that you should be able to undo by hand it's just a little plastic screw. The kick panel will pop right off. Oh, I put it on. Should pop right off. Again, you want to be careful. You don't want to uh, crease it. You don't want to leave white marking. So what I did was I ran my finger down and it popped right out. Put the little screw back so you don't lose it. So running the front speakers is kind of the same as running the back. You want to make sure you remove the grommet and the little rubber hose. That way you can run the wiring through that. You want to run your wiring through that rubber. You don't want elements getting to the wiring. It will eat it away. It will ruin the wire. So needle nose. Pull out that grommet. This grommet's a little bit different. The door side is the open side. The cab side is the closed. Like we did on the back door, you're going to want to remove the grommet. This grommet's a little bit different. The opening is on the door side, the closed end is on the cab side. You're going to want to do the same thing that you did. Hopefully you can see this. You're going to want to get the razor blade and you're going to want to nick this. That way you have access into that grommet. Again, be very careful not to hit wires. Just do a little bit at a time there's a little cut I've got what I need there I'm just gonna make it a plus that way it gives me a little bit more room okay doing the front doors is a little bit different it's a little bit harder than it is doing the back door you have more room to play on the back door than you do the front door one of the little tricks that I have is we have big old fat zip tie what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed this up. You can use a coat hanger. I'm sure everybody has those readily available. Undo the coat hanger, straighten it up. But again, make sure you're being very careful with the existing wiring. Put the coat hanger up through. Bring it out. 
what this does is this gives you something that you can tape onto to bring the wire through. So what we're going to do is we're going to feed the wire through the wall. There's a access point right here where all of the wiring goes through. We're going to feed this wire through it. I'm going to get a little bit of electrical tape. And I'm going to tape on the end of this, which whatever you're going to use, try not to make it too fat. You don't want to cut the wires in there. I mean, if you use a coat hanger, that's fine. Tape the wire onto it. And then you can pull that down. Don't forget, we did spray this with silicone spray. That's, that's what makes it slide through easily. It gives it less friction. Again, you don't want to damage that factory wiring. I don't want to stress that enough. I can't stress that enough. Here's I don't want to put the grommet yet because I'm going to pull back what I don't think I need. I believe this is enough slack for this door speaker. So I'm going to go ahead and take the tape off. Okay, I have enough length on the door speaker here. I have my tweeter wire here. On this install, we're gonna install the tweeter up here on the sail panel. So I brought it through here. You have the option of using the factory tweeters that come up on the dashboard. I like them up here, so we're putting them up here. Just make sure that you don't cut the length and you leave yourself with enough slack to do whatever connections you need. So we're gonna bring this up through the existing grommet that these wires come through already. There's already little holes inside. There's one right there that I'll just put the wire through and it'll come right out. This keeps the wire, like I said with the back speaker, going with the factory wiring, that way it's away from the window. This is definitely enough wire. I'm probably gonna pull a little bit out. Okay, that's enough so like I said when on the matting video when we did the tie wraps up here I left slack on these because I knew I was gonna bring a wire up here so these are open I'll just feed them up through these tie wraps tighten those tighten that one and then I'll put one extra zip tie up here to hold it out of the way I'll put one extra zip tie up here to hold it out of the way. of the slack you're gonna bring down I like to bring it through the areas that the truck already gives me leave yourself some slack even if you want to leave just a little bit more on this side. It gives you more room to play. Like I said, if you need extra slack to connect the speaker or you mess up and you need to cut off a little bit of the length, it gives you more length to hide behind the kick panel. I'll put a tie wrap down here. The amount of tie wraps that I use you may want to get extra. We're not going to give you like an abundant supply, but we're going to give you what we think you probably need. You may want to get extra. I tend to go overboard. 
same way you ran the back door, we're going to bring the front speakers. We're going to bring them through. Using it up. Okay. Same way we ran the back speakers, we're going to bring the front speakers the same way. I'm just pulling the slack through right now. I'm going to bring it. Make sure you go underneath this panel or the air duct. This one, I'm just going to go ahead and make them all the same length. So what I do is I pull the rear speakers. I'll go ahead and cut this one. And then I'll go ahead and label these FR for front right. Same way I labeled the back, just a little bit of blue tape. And that gives us our right door speakers with enough length to install the crossovers comfortably, not cramped up.